a connection between Barbie and the Beatles? By the end of this video, let me know what you think. So we're going to be talking about Barbie, not necessarily this Barbie, and Beatles, yes, necessarily these Beatles, and see how one inspired the other. So let's start at the beginning and uh, get this video rolling. So let's start our introduction of the Beatles. You know, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, those long hair, peace-loving hippies from Liverpool with a string of hits that people listen to even till today. Some may even say they're the greatest band that ever lived. Well, I'd be one of those. I'm a really a, a Fab Four fan. And if you haven't heard of them, then maybe you were born. Yesterday. Oh, yes, those swinging 60s. 1962, the Beatles just exploded on the scene with their first hit called Love Me Do. In 63, they had I Want to Hold Your Hand. 64, they were starting a movie called A Hard Day's Night, and that's where we're going to begin to see the connection between Barbie and the Beatles. Meanwhile, back at Mattel, this is what Barbie was doing in the 60s. So from 62, 63, 64, 64, 65, Mattel was still kind of stuck in the 50s. If you see these Beautiful outfits over here. I, I do love them. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Barbie fan. But starting with outfits like Red Sheath Sensation, uh, Suburban Shopper, Let's Dance. Mattel just had that 50s look. Now, it was 1960s and things were starting to change. The 50s look was kind of going out. But it took Mattel a while to get on board with the 60s look. But if they're going to do it and they're going to find some inspiration. Where you think they're going to find their inspiration? Through the Beatles, of course. So it's 1964. And that's going to be a big, important year for the Beatles and for Mattel when they start getting a little inspiration. At least that's what I think. So the Beatles are making their first movie called A Hard Day's Night. It's a cute little black and white film with the Beatles running around and being silly like they did in those days. Singing some great songs, though. And having... Paul's grandfather, well, not his real grandfather, but a character who plays his grandfather, a character who plays his grandfather, who's just always on the loose and they're trying to keep up with him. He's nursing a broken heart. Oh, no, that's my grandfather. Well, George isn't buying that that's Paul's grandfather. That's not his grandfather. With that cute British humor and, uh, they got the running joke throughout the whole thing that he's very clean. It's very clean. Anyway, it's a really cute film. If you're a Beatles fan and you've missed that one, I'd go check it out. It's really worth the watch just for the nostalgia, for the Beatles, for the music, for the humor. And speaking of George not buying into this, to that's Paul's grandfather, George is the one we're going to be focusing on today. Because George is going to run into someone during the filming of this movie that's going to change his life and it's going to change the Barbie world. So on the set of A Hard Day's Night, there was also a up-and-coming young lady, a 20-year-old model who was doing a photo shoot. Her manager actually was able to get her a couple of bit parts playing a schoolgirl in the Beatles film. Woo, how exciting that must have been for her. Anyway, when George saw her and she saw George, well, the, they say the sparks flew. It was an immediate attraction. And from that day forward, the two were like inseparable. So there was a new look in town, and it was called the British female look. Now, this model, even though she was young and had not done a lot of modeling at the time, was really good at modeling this look. Her and a few other actresses or models, one named Jean Stempton, who's reported to be probably the first supermodel, but I've heard that about a lot of them, so who knows. Anyway, they were super great and super popular in England for their look, the British female look. So once George and this girl got together, they started dating right after the movie. They were dating from 64 and 65. 
And then finally, in 66, they got hitched, so to say, or married January 21st, 1966. Keep that date in mind, January 21st, 1966. Now, let's see what Mattel's doing. So, from what I've read, Mattel was desperately looking for a new look. They wanted something to represent the swinging 60s. I guess the old bubble cuts, this is a bubble cut, by the way, and the ponytails don't have one of those available. But I guess maybe sales were down. I'm just speculating on that one. But they tried the doll in 65 called the American Girl, which is quite a collectible doll. And, um, yeah, she brings quite a hefty price on eBay. But anyway, she just didn't quite hit the mark at the time. So I have read, let me get my handy dandy notes here. Mattel wanted a younger looking doll to appeal to the changing times and the taste of young girls. They really wanted that swinging 60s look. So in 1966, they came out with a new doll. And this new doll, I'm going to throw up a picture of George Harrison's wife and this doll named Francie. And the doll is named Francie Fairchild, an English surname, no less, Fairchild. And she is going to just explode with color and, and fashion and mini dresses. And she's going to have that British female look, just like Patty Boyd was modeling everywhere. She had big eyes, long, straight, blonde hair, mini dresses, lots of color, lots of style. Just the epitome of the 60s look. So let's look at our doll that Mattel came out with. And you tell me, does she look like Patty Boyd to you? So this is the doll that Mattel released in 1966. Now remember, George and Patty had got married at the beginning of, of 66, January 21st, 1966. Later on in that year, I'm not sure exactly what time, they came out with this Francie doll. Now Francie doesn't have the big eyes, but she was the first doll to have lifelike lashes, and she's the first mod doll that Mattel came out with. There's others to follow, and I'll be telling you about those in just a moment. But let's look at this doll up close, and let's look at a great picture of Patty Boyd and see what we think. So what do you think? This is Patty Boyd. This is Francie. See some resemblance? I do. Let's look at them for just a moment. So you can call it coincidence or you can call it just the way things fell in line for Mattel. But for Patty Boyd to be a mod model and married to a Beatle, so she was everywhere. Who didn't see Patty Boyd if you were uh, an adult in those days and you ran a company? Of course, you would have been aware of who Patty Boyd was and the, the style that she was modeling, which was perfect 60s style. So Francie has a last name that is a British name. She is the first my doll. So she had that swinging 60s look. That's two things. Um, she has that straight, long hair. And they did come out with Francie's with different styles of hair uh, a little bit later on. And then she uh, she has the first lifelike touchable eyelashes, which was the look for the 60s uh, British female look. Those long, dark lashes with, or big eyes. They, they didn't do big eyes, but they did get the lashes on Francie. Now, she's just an inspiration. They didn't name her Patty. They named her Francie because I just feel like she was an inspiration for this doll. The perfect doll for that looks younger than Barbie. I mean. You've got to admit, I mean, you've got to admit the difference in this doll and this doll is quite amazing. This doll looks like, she, I've always thought, even though I love Barbies, I've always thought she looks 35. And uh, this doll does look like a teenage doll. And they did want to appeal to a younger crowd and have them to buy all these modern looking outfits. Let's look at it. So the British invasion not only rocked the world, it also rocked the Barbie world. 
So Fancy being the first my doll, there was others that soon followed and they completely dropped the ponytail and the bubble cut and the American Girl dolls. But since Patty Boyd, I believe, was the inspiration for the first my doll, Francie, let's look at some pictures of George Harrison and Patty Boyd in their happier times. They did get divorced. They did get divorced in 1977. And it's a strange story. Patty went on to marry another rock star. But wait, let's back up a moment. I wanted to tell you about some of the songs in case you didn't know. George Harrison was a great songwriter, of course, being a part of the Beatles. He wrote a couple of beautiful songs for Patty Boyd, one being called Something. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. So you know that song, right? And well, I Need You, which is a little bit faster song. I'm not going to sing that one. And then Eric Clapton, who she later married once she divorced George Harrison, wrote a song called Layla, which was a very popular song. Now, the strange thing about George Harrison and Eric Clapton, if you didn't know this, they were best friends. So I saw on an interview once with Patty that... Uh, George has stated, well, if you're going to lose your girl to somebody, it might as well be your best friend. I guess that was the spirit of George Harrison. Anyway, him and Eric remained friends, as far as I know, and he moved on and got remarried. Patty and George did not have any children. George did have one later on with another lady. And then, I don't know, Patty Boyd, I don't think her and Eric Clapton had any children, but I don't know what she did with the rest of her life. I do know she wrote a book, and I'll be showing a picture of her later on, kind of how she would look today. But these are just these were just a few pictures just to commemorate George and Patty. And Patty was also asked in the interview between George and Eric, which one would you say was the love of your life? And she did pick George Harrison. So like I said before, the British Invasion also rocked the Barbie world. So after the first small doll, Francie, the next year in 67, Mattel came up with uh, this doll, which is called Twiggy. Now, Twiggy was a real person. I guess they had to pay royalties or some kind of payment to somebody if they named him after the actual person. Maybe that's why they didn't name Francie Petty Boyd. I don't know. I'm just speculating once again. I like to speculate to you. Anyway, this is Twiggy, and she was another model who was very popular in the 60s. She was also British. Let me remind you, she's also British, and Twiggy had these great real lashes. All the dolls became mod dolls after this point, after 66. All dolls went the mod way. Here's another mod outfit, and there's one more doll. I can't not tell you about this one, a doll called... Barbie's British friend, and this is Stacy. And Stacy is a talking doll. Now, I don't think my microphone will pick, probably didn't pick it up, but if you'd like to see more about the talking dolls, the video, I'll put it at the end of this one. You can click on it. It looks like this right here. But um, yeah, I show all my talking dolls. And, oh, I was so excited when I got Stacy, the talking British Barbie friend. And of course, did I forget to mention, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, I don't remember. Frank Heat was known as Barbie's cousin. So, what do you think? Do you think I'm just dreaming? Or do you think I got some pretty good facts to support my theory that Francie came from Patty Boyd, her inspiration Patty Boyd and Mattel looking for a mod doll. Do you think that's true? Could this possibly be Patty Boyd in a doll form? I don't know. Get in the comments below if you agree, if you disagree, why you disagree. This is just my thoughts, uh, not my idea. I did see a little mention of this somewhere else one time, but I thought I'd make a video on it. I'm not the first one that had this thought. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe if you liked it. Click on the video at the end or go watch another video. That would make me very happy. And I may even do a Beatles song or dance. Anyway, uh, one more picture of Patty Boyd. 
and the way she looks now and happy barbie hunting and catch you next time